Welcome to EDPD 6303 Education Research. Dr. Chanel Rodriguez. And I'm Dr. Malva Cavell. And we're both professors in the Department of Education at West Texas A&M University. And we've created this video to help you understand what this course is all about. Uh, by the end of this video, we're hoping that you accomplish the following three objectives. Explain the structure and purpose of this course. Define the general purpose and process for academic research. Explain why social sciences use APA format to write up research. In the past, we had students question why they need to take a course on education research if they have no desire to work in academia or to work for a research firm. Uh, but as graduate students, we know you are enrolled in a program to expand your knowledge about your field and learning to interpret research can help you do just that. People conduct research for a variety of reasons. And most of those reasons fall into the following categories. To gain a better understanding of a topic in your field. To improve your practice. To discover new data or information. To add to the existing knowledge on a topic. To improve critical thinking or writing skills. To evaluate the effectiveness of methodology or a treatment. So in this course, we are going to use five modules to cover different aspects of research. We have created a folder under the Lessons tab in Blackboard for each module listed in your syllabus. The modules have been color coded with green being videos or reading you need to review to learn content, blue for resources to help deepen your understanding, and red for assignments that need to be submitted. All materials needed to complete the modules are available as a link in the directions on the front of the folder or are inside the folder itself. So as you can see in Blackboard, the modules are going to cover what is research, what are our experiences with research, and what's all the fuss about APA. Module 2 will cover what is quality research design, what is peer review process? How do I get started on the review of literature? Module three is going to cover the must-knows of APA style. How do you set up a document for APA style? And how do you move from reading peer-reviewed articles to synthesizing my own thoughts for a review of literature? Module four covers how do I critique the research of others how do I identify gaps in existing research so I can contribute new knowledge to the field? Module 5. Module 5 covers how we protect participants and the process for getting research approved. And then finally, we're going to have you submit a final draft of your review of literature, um, and that will serve as your final for this course. Mm -hmm. Our daily lives are bombarded with research. The medications we take, to political polls, to do your research comments on Facebook. However, not all research is rigorous, and many studies do not produce quality results that are generalizable to a larger population. For academic research in the social sciences, we want to ensure we are meticulous about design, so we produce quality research that contribute to new knowledge to our field. We would define the general process of academic research as identifying a problem in your field, conducting an extensive review of literature to determine the research that has already been done on the topic or that relates to your topic. This review is going to include you critiquing existing methods and results. Determining what gaps exist in existing literature so you can formulate your approach to answering your research question. You also want to outline parameters um, that you're bound to as a researcher, including what participants do you have access to. Uh, sometimes we get a little exuberant with who we want to do research on, um, and we don't actually have access to all of those participants. You also want to be concerned with what funding do you have. Uh, most research is not associated with large grants, um, and a lot of departments like our College of Education doesn't have specific funds dedicated to research. So a lot of our research has to be something where uh, we can afford it out of our own pocket or it has to be almost a zero cost. 
You also want to be concerned with how much time you have to complete your research. If you've only got a semester to do an entire research uh, paper, then you want to make sure that you can get that data collected and analyzed in that semester. There's things called longitudinal studies that exist. Um, those take place over several semesters, sometimes several years. Those cost a lot more money, um, are a much bigger time investment, and so on and so forth. And then last, you want to consider who's going to help you with your research. Are you going to be writing with a colleague? Um, are you going to be collaborating with people from different departments or maybe from different schools? Or are you going to be doing it all by yourself? Um, the next step would be determining how you will protect your participants so they are confident that they will not be mentally or physically harmed by your research. And we're going to touch on that in one of our modules later this semester, and you'll actually go through the training that gets you approved um, to do research uh, at a university. We want you to be able to determine what methodology and theoretical framework you will use and how to get your research approved. We're also going to talk to you about how to collect data, analyze that data, and then share the results uh, with a wider audience. So we've designed this course to take you through the first three steps of that process so that you have a solid foundation on how to conduct research. And so you can develop skills that will help you in future courses. So what is all the fuss about APA style? We know that you've had a variety of experiences with using APA style in your undergraduate and graduate courses. I had a pretty positive experience when I worked with my faculty. They explained APA style to us. They explained the APA manual to us. And if we had any questions, they would sit down with us, help us read the APA manual, and help us understand how to actually write research APA style. And I had the exact opposite experience. My experiences were typically very negative. The professors would say um, that the APA manual was required for the course, but then they would never show us like important things that we needed to mark. They'd never tell us what it was that needed to be fixed. They would just simply take off of major assignments um, for not using like the correct gender pronoun or for using language that was a little flowery. Uh, which I had a tendency to do since I was an English teacher. Um, and so there was just a lot of like, don't do this, don't do this. But it wasn't told to us until we had already submitted the paper for grading. Um, so we don't want you to have that same experience. We want yours to be much more like Dr. Bell's. And in this course, we're going to talk about why you want to use APA in the first place. It was developed by the American Psychological Association in 1929 to help publishers simplify the process of publishing articles and began as a set of recommendations. Over time, education, psychology, and sciences adopted APA as their go-to format for writing articles. As Michelle Knoll states, APA style provides clarity to papers on often complex topics. It makes papers easier to read and understand. When sources are cited the same way each time and the paper is written in a uniform format, it gives it a better flow and helps keep the focus on the content of the paper. APA style can also help the author better organize their research and help the reader easily find information that is important for evaluating that research. APA is currently in its sixth edition, which was published in 2009. We'll get into the details later, but that's the gist of why your professors are always such sticklers about APA style. That draws the new content for this video to a close. We want to see if you've accomplished those three objectives we stated at the beginning of the video. Explain the structure and purpose of this course. Define the general purpose and process for graduate level research. Explain why social sciences use APA format to write up research. And if you can do all three of those, you've mastered the information that you need to learn from this video. Be sure to complete all assignments listed in Module 1 folder in Blackboard. If you have any questions, please send us an email using course messages on Blackboard. Bye for now. Ta-ta!